Hello everyone. Before starting the video. Please, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thanks. Introduction In this video, I am going to explain the following topics. 1. What is FTP? 2. What is FTP used for? 3. What is an FTP server? 4. What do we need to configure an FTP server on our network? 5. What to do if we don't have a PC with high specs and the Windows Server OS? What is FTP? FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. Actually FTP itself is a protocol and it has its own functionalities like HTTP, HTTPS, SMTP and other protocols. FTP is used for transferring and receiving data or files among different computers over the Transmission Control Protocol slash Internet Protocol, means, TCP, IP, Network. TCP, IP Network means, the network, where we connect different PCs by assigning the IP address of the same network to each PC on the network for communication among all those PCs. All these PCs might be on the same network or on the different networks. If the PCs are distributed among different networks then, we need to configure the gateway among those different networks, so that, all the PCs from different network will be able to communicate with each other. By communication among those PCs, I also means the transfer of data among those PCs or machines over the Ethernet cable or through Wi-Fi. I am not talking about the transfer of data through USB or directly attaching another hard disk containing the data, but only the transfer of data via Ethernet or Wi-Fi. FTP is considered an application layer protocol in OSI layers. What is FTP protocol used for? FTP protocol helps in transferring and receiving the data or files over TCP IP networks. In simple words, it may not be wrong, if I say that, FTP protocol is used for uploading and, downloading the data or files, from FTP server within the same local network or, it may be over the internet between different networks. FTP server uses two ports. Port numbers are 20 and 21. FTP uses port 20 for receiving requests from the client and, it uses port 21 to respond to the client's requests or, we can say that, it uses port 21 to send data to clients. The drawback of using the FTP protocol is that, it is an insecure protocol means, it sends all the information over the network without any encryption. For example, when a client makes a request for authentication, by sending the login credentials to log into the FTP server for uploading or downloading the data, all the information will be dispersed in a plain text mode, having no encryption. Having said this, sending any information using FTP protocol, will be vulnerable to other people, especially for hackers and, they might steal our information, if it has no encryption. If the information will be shared only within the local network, then encryption might not be that much important. But if all the information is to be shared over the internet then, we may need the encryption to secure our information to be shared over the internet. To overcome this problem of encryption of information, we can use SFTP protocol, which stands for Secure File Transfer Protocol, or 
FTPS protocol, which stands for File Transfer Protocol Secure. But, I will only discuss here the FTP protocol in this video. As far as the SFTP protocol and FTPS protocol are concerned, I will make a separate video on these topics. So that, we will have the clear picture and difference between these protocols. What is an FTP server? In simple words, FTP server is a machine or PC with FTP services installed. When we install the FTP services on a machine, this machine or PC will become the FTP server. This machine or FTP server will act as a central location where all the clients can upload and save their data on a central location. This central location, where all the data is saved, will be accessible to all the clients and, they can upload and download the data from one central location. If a client or user wants to share the data with other clients, they can simply upload the data to this FTP server and, other clients can then download the data from this central location. FTP server provides better data management. I mean, we can assign different read and write permissions to different clients. In simple words, the permissions means downloading, uploading, creation of folders and files, deleting of folders or files etc. I will show you later on in this video that, how will we assign permissions to a client. After basic introduction of FTP protocol and FTP server, now we will proceed towards the configuration of FTP server. Note. If we are going to configure an FTP server on our network, then, we need to make sure that, we have enough space on the hard disk, to save the data of the clients on FTP server. Plus, other resources, like, RAM, processor etc. to smoothly run all the tasks of an FTP server. What do we need to build or configure an FTP server on our network? To build or configure an FTP server on our network, we will need the following resources, accessories, or equipment as per the recommended procedure. Number 1. A server machine or server PC. Actually the machines, which we use for any server configuration, must have high specifications or resources like, high speed processor, high speed ethernet card, enough RAM, hard disk with high speed and, large capacity to store the data. In simple words, we can say that, the PC, which we will be using for FTP server or, any other server like DHCP server, WSUS server etc. must have enough resources depending on the scalability of our network. The greater the number of clients to be connected to the FTP server, the higher should be the resources on the server PC. Number 2. Microsoft Windows Server Operating System Since I am working here on Microsoft Operating System, not any Linux operating system, that is the reason. I will mention here only the Microsoft Windows Server Operating System. Because this Windows Server operating system comes with extra features than a normal client operating system. Microsoft Windows Server operating systems have different versions like Microsoft Windows Server 2000, 2003, 2008, 2012 and 2016 etc. The procedure to configure or setup of FTP server is almost the same, on both the operating systems like Microsoft Windows Server and any other Microsoft client operating system. The only difference is the number of features. As I mentioned before that, the server OS has extra features than a client OS. What do we have to do? If we don't have a PC with high resources and the Microsoft Windows Server operating system to build an FTP server.
if we do not have both the PC with high-end resources. And if we do not have the Microsoft Windows Server operating system, then what do we do? We can purchase a new PC with high-end resources or specs and the Microsoft Windows Server operating system along with license for this purpose. But, before purchasing the new PC and Microsoft Windows Server operating system, we need to ask ourselves this question again and again. Do we really need to spend all the money to purchase the PC and the OS? The answer is, it depends on the requirements of our network. If we only need the FTP server to be configured on our network then, no need to spend all the money on purchasing the PC with high specs and the Microsoft Windows Server operating system because it will be expensive and it will cost us so much. So, what do we do in that case? Alternative solution to this problem is that we can use any client PC for FTP server configuration. By client PC, I mean the PC, on which we are using the client operating system like Microsoft Windows 7, Windows 8, or Windows 10 etc. Only by installing the FTP services on the client PC, the client PC will now act both as an FTP server and a client PC as well. It does not matter whether we use our laptop or desktop machine to configure FTP server on it, but, it is important to note down that, the client PC must be connected to the network via Ethernet port, because the Ethernet port has stable and higher data transfer speed than a wireless connection. So, for better performance, it is always recommended to use the Ethernet port of the PC to connect to the network. Next important thing is that, we must have a dedicated or reserved IP address for our FTP server and, we must avoid the dynamic IP address. So, the bottom line is that, before building an FTP server, make sure that, we have a dedicated IP address, which will be reserved for the FTP server and, we must connect our FTP server PC to the network via Ethernet port. Next video. The next video is about the practical section of the FTP server configuration on a Windows 10 machine. Where, I will configure the FTP server step by step, on a client OS, I mean, a Windows 10 machine. So, be with me, and, do not forget to watch the next video. Thanks. Hey! Please! Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. If you have any query, leave it in the comments section below. I will be more than happy to entertain. Thanks for watching this video.